Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel where we've been doing a little revisit to some older tutorials I did uh, way back and giving them a little nitwit update because we are celebrating the Black Friday to Cyber Monday sale that's going on in the Knitwit Collection shop. So if you like some of these Christmas kits or any of the kits and you want to try them for the first time or build up your collection, head to the description below and you'll find a link to the kits I'm using and then just go browse the shop and find some uh, kits you'd like to use and add. So we've already done the pinwheel tower. We've done the uh, stand up forward flat. So the next one we're revisiting is one I've actually done quite a few times. It's my faux easel card. So I've done quite a few different versions of this. It's been quite popular, so I thought it'd be a great one to have a look back on. Now, this is a new kit for me. I haven't used before. It's called Flight School. And as you can see, it features Rudolph and his friends attending Santa's Flight School. So I love the colours of this. It reminded me of the little Sir with the night, same sort of blues and reds that was in that kit. And it was quite a nice whimsical one. So if you want to know how to make a faux easel, maybe in the past you've tried making easel cards which involved um, having to score and to certain points and cut from point to point, all that disappears in this tutorial. It's a faux one. So it's much, much easier to make and perfect for any occasion. So any of your kits and papers you've got hanging around, you want to get out or anything new you've got from the shop. So grab some cardstock, have a think about your papers and let's have a look at how it was made. So we're ready now to start making our card. So to make our faux easel, we need a base one. So I've got my trimmer ready. I got my card stock. And I'm gonna cut the first one at seven inches. So again, this will make a seven by five version by nine and a half. So you've got a nice piece then if you wanna Matt and layer some of your sentiments, or if you're going to give your images a bit of extra strength. And the second piece we need is 10. By three and a half. So if you're going to make more than one, you've got enough here now to make your second stepper and that's all you need to do then is to cut another of your base panels. So let's move our trimmer away and bring in the scoreboard. So we're going to place our larger piece with the nine and a half at the top. Get my larger scoring tool. And I try to keep the measurements nice and easy. So it's three and a quarter and six and a half. And eight. So three score lines there. Three and a quarter, six and a half, eight. And then our ten by three and a half. I'm scoring in half. So it's at five. So the 10 across the top, score at five. And that's all our scoring done. So in your traditional uh, easel, uh, it's not a um, easel card, you would now, a stepper card, you would start trying to take lots of extra score lines and stuff. But because it's a faux one, we won't need to do any of that. So, I don't know if it'll pick it up. So I've got my larger pieces here, my two shorter ones there. So the first one, our three and a quarter will be a mountain. Our six and a half will be a valley. And our eight will be 
a mountain. And our larger piece then is just going to be a mountain in half like that. So now that I've scored, I'm just going to bring in my scoring tool and just give them a little bit more of a crease. I don't need to overscore it. There we go. Now, because I'm using some craft card, I'm just going to add some brown ink just to add some depth to my card. It'll add a nice little shadow. There's one. And I'm just going to do the front of this card, the shorter step. And I need to do the larger one that's behind. So I'm just going to fold this one back for now so I can get to it. And now you don't really need to do the bottom, but just in case someone does look down or opens the card fully, I'm going to do so. Now it's up to you, you can ink that piece as well. I don't feel the need to because you're not going to see it really, because when it's standing up, you're only going to see that and that. So before you then assemble it, you're going to want to decorate this piece. So with it being a 7 by 5 card, our width is 7. So all my papers are going to be cut to 6 and 3 quarters, just a quarter of an inch less. Now, because I'm using a digi kit, I've actually sized it on the printer ready, so everything is ready to go. But if you're just using your printed pattern paper or your paper kits, six and three quarters wide, the front one will need to be one and a half. Sorry, one and a quarter. The height is one and a half, so I need to go down a quarter. Now I'm using Flight School from Litwick Collections. Now, this is a new one. I think it was Rania who's used it from the design team. So, as soon as I saw it, I thought I had to get it. So, it's full of um, deer, the reindeer. One Rudolph, because he's a red nose there, um, flying. So, that's the kit I'm using. So, it's one and a quarter for that one. And then your back piece is three and a quarter. So, I'm going to make it a three inch one. Now, you'll see on mine. It's got a red border and then my patterns paper. If you're just going to print off your papers, the next piece down will just be a quarter of an inch less. So it'd be six and a half by two and three quarters. And this one is one inch for the patterns paper. So if you're cutting a red piece and then your patterns piece separately, you're just going to cut it a quarter of an inch less. But because I've done it on the computer, it's now totally flat, so brilliant for Christmas and postage and things. So let's add this in. So I'm just using my glue so I can move it around. So I've already inked these with some brown ink. A bit too much glue there. So I'm just going to centralise it. And then the front panel. And then just press it down. So the joy with making a faux stepper is, this will be my stepper piece. And because it's not attached, and I haven't had to measure before where it's going to go, I can now decide if I want a left stepper centre or right. No new measurements, it's just where I'm going to glue it. So I've got a three and a half by five piece here, which means my topper now is going to be three and a quarter wide by four and three quarters tall. So you see it's four and three quarters and from red to red is three and a quarter and that will go on there. And again, because I've used my digi kit, 
I've been able to place this image hanging off the edge. So when I glue it, I'm going to make sure I don't put glue be uh, behind Rudolph. There we go. And then, as I said, I've got all these scrap pieces. If I hadn't used my digit, I would probably back him onto this just to make it stronger, but I won't need to because it's all part of the kit. But because this image has been built up by me rather than a ready-made topper, I've been able to copy and paste the reindeer to get a second one. So he will now fit perfectly onto the one on the topper. Is this and onto his legs? So, we're just going to add some extra dimension onto it today. There we go. So, my Rudolph card now. I've got him 3D foamed like so. I've got a sentiment from the kit, which I'm just going to glue. And glue onto my scrap craft. I'm just going to trim it with a thin border. I should have enough ink left on this just to give it a little edge. So he's ready to go as well. So now is the time to start wondering how I'm going to layer this up. I've got room there. So I think because he's going off to the left, I could put him there. But the only thing I'll be careful with, I can't put him there because he would extend past the card and won't fit in my envelope. So I think I quite like him going off to the left there. And then, yep, I've still got room for my sentiment there. So I could do a little pencil line there, but I'm just going to risk it. So I'm going to add some tape to both the bottom pieces of my card. So this is what's going to hold it in place. So I'm just gonna expose a tiny bit of it off and expose a little bit here as well. So this is the front. So my tape is gonna be there. So I know I can't take my glue above there. So I'm just gonna take the top off first. I don't want to take my glue above that step. So he's going to be glued to there. Let's take off the tape. Let's turn him around. Not going beyond there. So it may be easier if I turn it sideways. There we go. Then I'm going to keep all of this shut. So my card came up to there, so I'm just going to add some glue behind. And I'm going to close my card. So that's my faux stepper. I've still got my sentiment, so let's add some foam tape along. Let's just cut a bit off. There we go. So here we go. Reindeer games. And that is your completed faux stepper. 
as I said, takes away all the measurements and the headache of trying to remember where you start cut lines and stopping at this score line and scoring up to the cut line and things. All of that is taken away. You've still got space inside for your sentiment. So you've got plenty of room. So I could have stuck that inside or find another one from the kit. Just make sure that you don't go off the edges so that it still fits in your envelope. Now, you can also add some more embellishments here. And you can obviously take it up above that as well. So if I had another range, I could have put in there. But for now, I've kept it nice and simple for a quick, easy Christmas card. And the beauty of it being a digital kit is if I want to make another one, I just print off um, the toppers again and I'll never run out so I can make as many as I want. So thanks for watching my revisit of the faux easel card. It's been one of my favourites. I've made quite a few of them in the past. You may have seen some Litwick Pond ones, some floral ones. I've made quite a few. And if you do make one, I'd love to see your version. So please share with me in my uh, Facebook group, Paper Crafting with Paul. I'll add a link below. Also on Facebook, there's the Knitwit Neighbourhood group. So they'd love to see your makes using their kits. So if you're using Knitwit kits, share it there. And if you haven't already done so, please hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button below and write me a nice little comment. It just helps the channel to grow and be spotted by the dreaded YouTube algorithm. So thanks for watching. And I still have another one to go. So keep watching for even more card tutorials. See you again soon.